Ah, I got it. Had to restart OBS because didn't have the option to game capture or anything. Stop working.
25 miles an hour limit. Get out and walk faster than this. Oh, well, briefly allowed to go 65 and now back down to 25.
Hey, that didn't hit nothing. I like the look of the road ahead. Yes, we are open.
already there. I can borrow 500,000.
Where am I going? Same things.
channel. Uh, let's go to Bill, who's in London. Bill, good evening. You're on TalkSport. And whatever I do to this machine, we don't seem to be able to get the bill. Is it me, or has somebody gone to sleep? 
Right, let's try again. Bill, good evening. Hi, Bill. I get fed up with this machine, I'll tell you. There isn't room for me on this machine in the studio. One of us is going in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll try it. Let's try Pauline in Sutton. Hello, Pauline. Well, um, I think... What the hell is going on here? Pauline, are you with us? All right, well, let's go to Barbara in Leeds. Barbara, good evening. I'm sorry Hello, about that. Hello, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I don't know what's going on here, but there's a machine in this studio with me. You nearly made me forget what which, which, is a, which is supposed to help me with the phone calls. It's the latest technology. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going out the bloody window in about ten minutes' time.
welcome to this video cast for subscribers to davidike.com. Well, over the years, there's been two films, movies that have mirrored my own research um, in such a way that I was taken aback when I watched them and uh, saw these visual representations of what I've been writing about for a long time. One was, of course, The Matrix and the Matrix trilogy in general, where um, people were living a false reality, believing it to be real. And as a result of that, they were controlled and herded and manipulated and directed by that which was controlling the false reality. That I suggest, um, as I go into detail in, in my books and in the uh, Wembley event, and uh, the video of that's gonna be available very soon. Um, I go into detail about the fact that I'm saying that that is precisely the theme of our reality and why our reality is as it is. But the other film that um, goes back further came out in 1988, which really um, captures the themes of uh, what I'm talking about and what I'm suggesting is going on here, um, was one that was nothing like as, as, as big as The Matrix and as promoted as The Matrix, but it was brilliantly accurate in the way it portrayed the society that it did. And it was called They Live. And I'll talk a bit more about uh, the storyline in a second, but basically it's the fact that a non-human race was controlling human society by hiding behind human form. And a bit like the theme of uh, the Avatar movie, where the American um, military were infiltrating the uh, society of the Navi, the blue people, by taking on a, um, a blue uh, person outside um, form. Um, and therefore, people are being infiltrated without realizing that some force that's not from them is doing the infiltrating. So it was kind of uh, interesting to me uh, this week when someone sent me a clip of an interview, in fact, the whole interview, but there was a certain clip in it that I'm talking about, by um, Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper was the uh, actor who starred in They Live. And in this interview, he said, in effect, that They Live was not a film, it was like a documentary. It was like telling the story as it really is. And uh, indicating, mentioned that, that um, I, in many ways, used that movie as a, a theme template for explaining what I'm saying is going on. And then actually, Roddy Piper was saying, well, that is what's going on. And uh, I remember uh, when I first saw They Live, um, and the producer, director, that did everything to make it possible guy was uh, a fellow called John Carpenter. And when I watched it, I thought, either that guy's got real lucky or he has a very good idea what's going on. I, I suspect the latter. And uh, I remember um, someone years later wrote to John Carpenter and said, look, this bloke David Icke is saying that actually they live is based on on, on, on fact and he said oh no no the the, the aliens in, in in the movie hiding behind human form uh, were symbolic of the Republican Party <laughs> well anyone who's seen they live and you're all, you are in a laugh so um, I, I think when you um, when you watch John Carpenter's uh, filmmaking history that guy's got a, a, a very good idea of much of what's happening that's my view anyway so they live and that there are so many uh, uh, movies coming out now that are symbolizing the society that uh, the global cabal want to introduce it's kind of preparing people to accept it getting people familiar with it so we won't resist it as much as we would otherwise but they live the matrix too but they live um, is operating at another level it's um, symbolizing 
the um, the very force that is actually behind all this and, and, and why human society is the nonsense, the inversion, the grotesque um, inversion of how human society could be. Um, and the movie um, starts out, it came out in 1988, but it was kind of projected forward a bit. So really about now, this kind of time it took place in. And there was a massive recession. And by the way, I've, I've put a link with this video cast so you can watch the whole, the whole film. Um, there was a massive recession and Roddy Piper's character is a drifter uh, going from place to place trying to get work in the building trade. And he turns up in, um, in this particular place and he gets a, a, a temporary job on this building site. And what um, happened then is he was befriended by a fellow called Frank who um, had nothing but said, you know, we, we're basically sleeping rough on, on this wasteland. Um, and so you, you can, you can come and join me, uh, you know, stay, stay with us. Cause he, you know, Piper just turned up, had nowhere to live and no money. So they, t they, they go to this piece of wasteland and there's a, like a community there, all people struggling, can't afford homes. And what interested, um, Roddy Piper's character is that they had this, um, television, um, black and white television rigged up really old and, you know, battered. And when they were watching this television, it kept uh, the, the main programming that, that kept being cut in, um, or cut out by a, uh, a broadcast, a uh, very primitive broadcast from, uh, just a face, uh, on the screen saying they're here and they're manipulating us and all that. And, um, it, he started to notice that there was something strange going on at the church across the road from this piece of waste ground. And anyway, um, one day he um, goes in there, uh, sneaks in there, and there's a choir singing. But when he gets in, he realizes it's, it's a tape and that there was something else going on and it certainly wasn't anything to do with the church. Anyway, um, he um, finds some boxes, some uh, brown, brown uh, boxes and um, he um, didn't uh, didn't know what was in them but um, that night he was uh, at the waste ground when the police state turned up because as well as this uh, massive recession uh, that, that was portrayed was also the police state the vicious police state the very police state that we're so fast going into now and um, this, this, there was a police raid, the black helicopters, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, the police cars, um, the, the, the trucks to, to raise the, the, the little settlement and, and, and destroy it. And everyone, you know, ran away. Some people got beat up and, and the Roddy Piper character got away and he, he came back the next day and he went in the church. Because he, he 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 had a look around. He wanted he wanted to know what was in these boxes, so he grabs one, and runs out and goes into a a, a back alley, um, and opens the box. And in it, were just a pile of sunglasses, which is like, what? Obviously, no idea. Well, sunglasses? Well, what boxes of sunglasses got got to do with anything? Anyway, he, he picks one up, puts it in his pocket, and then throws the rest in the trash and walks off out of the back alley into the main street. He's then um, walking along and he just puts the sunglasses on. And suddenly life weren't the same anymore because what he could see with the sunglasses on was not what he could see with them off. And he looked around and instead of um, drink Coca-Cola or uh, vacation in Jamaica, these big adverts boards, he saw things like stay asleep, go to sleep, obey, um, don't, uh, don't challenge authority, that kind of stuff everywhere. 
he, we was just being hit by him. Then he walks along to this newsstand and uh, he picks up things like kind of magazines like Newsweek and at that time, that kind of thing. And he opens them up and without the glasses on, it's just print and pictures, normal thing he used to, puts the glasses on and it's all the same stuff. Uh, this is your God and it was money and, and um, all the subliminal messages saying obey authority, go to sleep, um, uh, basically just breed and um, don't think for yourself, all these things in the magazines. He then looks up and a fella comes across to buy a paper or something and in the glasses or through the glasses, this guy's not human. <laughs> so he takes the glasses off and the guy's human. Puts him back on, he's not human. The guy selling him the paper, he's human with the glasses and without the glasses, but not this fellow. And he starts to realize as he, as he walks around with these glasses on, and there's some really funny lines in it too, um, that they're, they're, they're the minority, but they, there is this group of people that are not human when you put the glasses on. Can you believe it? She didn't even go to Lamar's class. I told her, for yourself and for the baby. Go! I don't know what to do. Hey, go for it, man. It's easy for you to say you got the promotion. Look, it'll come, all right? Just don't worry about it. The feeling is definitely there. It's a new morning in America. And Friends. he then starts to realize, because he's in a shop and he looks up, and I think the president or somebody like that was making, I think it was the president, was making a speech. And he puts the glasses on, and the president's not human. And he starts to realize that um, people in the positions of power um, in, in, in locally and, 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 and nationally, we're, we're actually these not human people. Um, and he comes across, across some police and uh, some of them were, were human, uh, but the most aggressive, unpleasant ones, they weren't human. Where'd you get those glasses? Tooth fairy. I'll bet. You got them. I think you saw shaving this morning. You look as shitty to us as we do to you. Impossible. It would be easier if we don't have to splatter your brains. Just take it easy. And you stumbled onto something here. Maybe we can all benefit from this slight misunderstanding. Now let's go someplace quiet so we can talk this over.
And eventually, uh, he's now realizing what the game is. He gets back to Frank. And um, Frank's still working. He's working away. He's trying to earn some money to send back to his family and all that stuff. Um, and Frank don't really want to know what um, Roddy Piper's character is telling him. And so they go into this back alley um, where he gets the sunglasses back that he threw away. And they have this fight, which at the time was one of the longest fights in movie history. It went on and on and on as they knocked the living crap out of each other. Why? Because Roddy Piper is trying to get Frank to put the glasses on so he can see the world as it really is. And Frank is fighting not to have the glasses on. Now, the fact that that was, um, you know, a, a, such a long and, 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 and vicious fight is incredibly symbolic of the way that humanity in general fights and kicks and custs um, not to know the truth. Change the subject. Don't want to know. Don't uh, change the subject. Don't don't want to hear about it. Don't show me. Don't tell me the truth. Don't show me the truth because I don't want to see it. Because I'd rather stay in my manipulated head in the sand ignorance. But as I've said many times, ignorance is bliss, but only for a while, and then it knocks on your door and asks for your papers. You know we've got to face this. So there's this massive fight where, where, where Frank is trying not to put the glasses on and see the world as it really is and, and etc. But eventually uh, he does. And, well, he sees the world as it really is. And um, what they found in this uh, They Live movie is that there was um, a frequency being broadcast from the top of a television uh, skyscraper, television station skyscraper, which was stopping humans seeing the truth, seeing who they were really controlled by, and seeing all the subliminals that were constantly telling them to stay asleep, obey authority, uh, not question. And um, eventually the um, the broadcast dish is is destroyed and it stops working. And at that moment, it's actually quite funny, really. I mean, you've got you've got people in a bar who all look human, uh, having a drink, um, and then suddenly the transmission's cut off, and there's this 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 guy who's not human suddenly sitting among them who was human a few seconds ago, or appeared to be. And um, they're, they're, you know, they, were, they, they show many instances of suddenly people think they're with a human and suddenly they realize they're not because the blocking frequency to stop them from seeing it um, had disappeared. The Oscar winners give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat as Gloria, prime like news like shit. Where I've been coming from is that there is a blocking frequency. Uh, that is keeping us from seeing uh, 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 much further into the field of reality. And thus we are entrapped within a frequency band so tiny that we can actually visually decode into a reality we think we see. It's, a, it's almost funny. Of the mass matter that mainstream science says uh, exists in this universe. It's actually a lot more, but what they say exists. Um, the visible light, which is the only frequency band that we can see and visually experience, um, is so tiny, it's ridiculous. The electromagnetic spectrum as a whole is only 0.005% um, of what they say exists in mass and matter in this universe. And visible light is a fraction of the 
0.005%. So when I, when, I, when I kind of realized that, when I saw that, when I read all that, it, what, what struck me immediately is that is, that is freaking ridiculous. Why can we see only a, 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 a ludicrously tiny band of reality? And I suggest it's because we are being held in there by transmissions that are a blocking our not only our, our ability to see further into the field of reality but to raise our frequencies to go deeper and deeper and deeper into other levels of reality and so that blocking frequency is one part of it but i say there's another part of it and that is that these transmissions are also transmitting a fake reality which we are decoding in the way that i, I describe in detail in the books um, into this reality we think is real but it's actually fake it's actually like a like a, a hack and so when, when when i look at it if you fuse they live with the matrix you fuse those two themes together you have pretty much got the situation that we're in and when I talk about um, bloodlines, hybrid bloodlines, which can be traced way back into the ancient world and the, you know, the uh, whole theme of royalty and special bloodlines and the bloodlines of the gods and all that stuff, all comes from the, this fact that they are hybrid bloodlines, part human, part non-human. And the non-human hides behind the outward human appearance exactly as is portrayed in they live and so we within our frequency band of decoding this tiny band of frequency visible light we are decoding the human part of that hybrid energy field and we see humans just like in they live um, they saw humans when they didn't have these sunglasses on which which broke the code and so we think these people are human we think royal families are human we think people running the banking system and then corporations and monsanto and all these things we think they they're human when we look at them because they look human but if you could see beyond the uh beyond the suppressed frequency band you would see that they absolutely are not human when you get into that level of them. And so they live is so accurate in its themes, it's, it's, it's stunning, really. And when you therefore look at these bloodlines that are running Britain and France and the United States and Canada and Australia and China and Russia and all these things. At the human level, that where we interact with everything, they seem to be um, often in opposition, like, oh, it's the Russians, it's the Chinese, it's the this, it's the that, it's the other, it's the uh, North Koreans and so on. And at that level, it's a game being played out basically with the human target population thinking that all these different groups and countries and peoples are um, opposing each other but actually they're all the same non-human network taking different forms and controlling different aspects of human society so in that way the chinese leadership if you go deep enough into their uh, secret society network because of course this is very compartmentalized um, in terms of people who know you go into the same situation in russia and the united states uh, britain etc you go deep enough into the nazis 
deep enough into um, Stalinist, communist Russia and the Soviet Union. And all these people that appeared to be, or forces and countries that seemed to be in conflict with each other, are all part of the same team. That's how it works. And so they're um, moving pieces around the chessboard while controlling the moves of both sides. Thus they control the game. And we have to be persuaded that actually that chessboard has multiple sides, when actually it has one, if you go um, deep enough. And there was another couple of stories this week which broke, um, science stories. One, which all kind of relate to this, um, and the reality we're actually um, experiencing. This one says X-Men mind control becomes a reality. Man plays video game using the hand of another gamer sat half a mile away. Taking control of another person's body with your mind is something that has long been dreamed of in comic books and films like X-Men, but now scientists have achieved it in real life. Researchers used electromagnets and computers to transmit a person's brain waves, allowing them to control the hand of another sitting in a different building one mile away. Um, the technology recorded the brain signals from a computer gamer and then fired them into the brain of another volunteer, triggering the nerves that controlled their hand muscles. That allowed the gamer, who had no physical control themselves, uh, or computer controls themselves, uh, allow them to use the other person to play the, uh, the computer game. And um, it says the technology makes it possible to control the body of another person with thoughts, something that Professor Xavier was able to do in um, the X-Men. Now, you know, saying all these years that One of the greatest forms of human control is to control the sense of the possible. Because if you can compress people's sense of the possible, then while they think this is possible, and actually this is possible, and you're operating in this area here to do the manipulation, as long as the population only think that is possible, then you're going to do what you like here and no one's going to uh, believe what you're doing or even know what you're doing and certainly not believe what you're doing because it's well beyond their sense of the possible. So when people like me come along and say, this is going on, look, 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 oh, he's mad, he's, he's, he's ridiculous, you know, insane and all this stuff. Um, but what's happening now, slowly but surely, is that aspects of mainstream science are uncovering and seeing to be true more and more what so-called nutters and weirdos have been saying for such a long time. And this uh, taking over someone's mind so you can play a computer game through them is a piece of cake because the, the, the brain is a biological computer. In fact, the, um, the whole body is a holographic biological computer. Um, and if you can access that on the wavelength of that computer, then you can hack the system and you can make the body act and the mind act as you dictate it. Now, oh, by the way, before I go on, that's why they want a global DNA database. Because if they've got your DNA, they've got your unique wavelength of everybody. That's the whole idea. Um, so if we go back to what I was saying about this transmission, 
uh, both blocking the wider reality that we should be experiencing and aware of, but also feeding us the false reality which we're decoding into this um, into this, this this world we think is real, just like a computer decodes the internet. Then you can start to see that if you can hack the system, just like that study experiment has done with the game, then you can not only suppress people's ability to see the wider reality, you can dictate the reality they do have and even dictate body movement. Never mind the key foundation of it all, which is human perception itself, from which everything comes. Get people to perceive something a certain way, everything comes from that. Their behavior, their responses, all of it. That's why the, my latest book is called The Perception Deception. That's what it is. And so we're now getting more and more confirmation, even through mainstream sources like this one, that what I've been saying all this time is possible. It's, if you like, technically possible to do what I've been saying is going on. Uh, and it is going on. And they live and the Matrix um, together basically portray what's going on. And there's another um, story um, this week uh, from science. Um, controlling medication with your mind. Thought regulation of genes made possible. Um, scientists have created the first device which allows people to turn genes in mice on and off at will using only their brain waves. In humans, the ability to regulate the expression of genes through thoughts alone could open up an entirely new avenue um, for medicine, uh, so on and so forth. And, and, and basically what this experiment found is that by focusing the mind, you can change the nature of genes. And this um, is an aspect of something else that I've been talking about, which is that if you can broadcast something, be it brain waves, be it technologically generated, that is on the frequency of, for instance, in this case, the body, which in its prime form is an energetic field. This is just the decoded um, hologram. Actually, the base form is, a, is an information field. If you can change that information field through uh, broadcasting technologically information fields akin to brainwaves here, um, on the frequency of that field, then you are going to change the field. And as you change the field, you change the projected hologram. Thus, uh, you, uh, we call this genetic mutation. So, you know, when um, we've had all these stories in all the cultures about um, the manipulation by the gods of human genetics, um, and um, interbreeding with humans and all that stuff. It, it didn't have to be, um, f if you like, physical procreation. Uh, through technology, if it's advanced enough, you can mutate a species um, in the way I've just described. And this could well explain some of these sudden jumps and changes in the human form that have been documented even by mainstream science. So we are in a era now when information coming to light through at least the cutting edge of mainstream is more and more confirming that what I've been saying about the way this reality is and how it works and how it's been hijacked is actually 
if you like, technically possible, technologically possible, because they're beginning to understand at last, hallelujah, more about the true nature of reality and, and the body and how it works and how the mind interacts with so-called matter. And thus they're um, starting to see um, that what they dismissed before as absolutely impossible, ridiculous, because they were just seeing physical and solid, is actually very possible and indeed more than very possible, very um, straightforward. I remember um, using the quote at Wembley um, by Nikola Tesla, you know, the, one of the great scientific geniuses of the 20th century, for whom we have to thank for things like radar, because he had it stolen from him by Marconi and um, uh, won a series of um, cases in the um, Supreme Court of the United States, proving that and having it accepted, yet still today, oh no, Mar Marconi, radar, no, no. Tesla um, and, and we can thank him for the electricity systems we have today. The man was a bloody genius um, and he said that when science starts to look at non-physical phenomena, when it starts to look at frequency and vibration and such like, it will make greater strides um, in a short time then it's taken vast amounts of what we call time to get to this point. The breakthroughs would just be phenomenal. And that's not only in the sense of understanding how we get free energy without um, use of fossil fuels, without wind turbines and all that stuff, um, and even solar power, you can access the natural electrical, electromagnetic forces um, all around us to turn it into usable warmth and power as, 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 as he knew, and he did. Um, but it's not only that, but these breakthroughs, at least in mainstream breakthroughs, in understanding more and more about the malleable, energetic nature of reality, they are also opening the door to see what this society really is and what's really behind it. Because these entities hiding behind human form and so brilliantly portrayed in their lip are feeding off human low vibrational energy emotional energy, fear, anxiety, depression, uh, hatred, all these things, because that's the frequency band that they can absorb, because that's their state of being. But they're hiding behind human form for a reason, that there's not enough of them, and they're not powerful enough, compared with human potential, to control human society if human society knew what the bloody hell was going on, and who was behind it. And so they have to hide behind human form. And in doing so, they hijack the positions of power. And they make decisions in all these different, you know, so talk about, you know, the, the, the extreme uh, Muslims and extreme uh, Israelis and the extreme uh, white Americans or British or whatever. Um, in terms of the political decisions that have been made and the military decisions that have been made, grasp that they're all being made by different expressions of the same hidden force, then the pennies start to drop on what's going on in the world. And so what they want, and there's many reasons for this, but what they want is human society at war with itself. Because while human society is at war with itself, the target population is divided and ruled, and they just run the bloody show without almost everybody realizing that they're running the show or even they exist, never mind running the show. And, and so when you, um, you, you look at how different peoples are played off against each other, that's being done systematically. 
And if we're going to bring an end to it, and we are, then this understanding has to be grasped of what the force is um, manipulating and playing different parts of the human family off against each other. And another thing needs to be realized, the only way to stop it is to stop being manipulated, to stop being told to hate this people or fight this people or arm that people or attack that people. Because all the different expressions of political and economic and military leadership that are saying that are in the end all the same network of non-human entities who are manipulating human society by hiding behind human form. So for that, you know, they live is, um, is a real gift because what it does in little more than an hour and a half, not a long film, um, it gives a, a, a brilliant visual representation of what we're dealing with and how the world could be if we rid the world of this force in the shadows. So I really do recommend, if you're not seeing They Live, I really recommend it because um, it's um, very enlightening uh, in the way that it betrays the world because that's the world we actually live in. Okay, thanks for listening. See you next week. Bye.
shopping right now.
I've been waiting for the answer to a problem I don't know. And as the years are passing, I have no more clues to show. Where are the answers?
Radio. You really don't need to do your shopping right now.
I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. The poor and the underclass are growing. 
Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. They have created a repressive society, and we are their unwitting accomplices. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own gain. Please understand they are safe as long as they are not discovered. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, keep us sedated. This world may have blinded me, but the Lord has let me see.